In 16th century Japan, Yasuke was the first and likely the only black samurai. Yasuke arrived in Japan in 1579. He was acting as a bodyguard for a collective of Jesuits who were traveling to the Far East um, to um, convert people to Christianity and they needed bodyguards and Yasuke was physically formidable uh, and intellectually formidable as well. Um, he learned languages so easily. Uh, he you know, was very uh, physically strong and he had extremely dark skin. He was seen as being just this formidable uh, physical force. There was a lot of uh, commotion surrounding his presence. Um, at the time, you know, the average height of a Japanese man would have been uh, five feet, two inches tall. Uh, he was well over six feet tall, and people, <laughs> you know, heard about him and came out into the streets and ended up at the doors of, um, of one of the Jesuits. And, you know, the, the crowd actually physically broke down the door and were kind of stepping over each other to get a look at him. And some people were actually trampled uh, to death. At the time, um, Japan was a, a sort of, uh, you know, it wasn't a, a sort of a unified nation. There were all these little fiefdoms and, and warlords who were vying for control against each other. And there were three very powerful uh, warlords and uh, Nobunaga was the most powerful uh, and ferocious of these warlords. And he got word of the presence of this um, formidable man in the streets of, um, of Kyoto. And so he sent for him and I guess was astonished uh, to see uh, Yasuke and was actually, um, you know, trying to rub the color off of his skin uh, because of course he had never seen uh, a man so dark. Uh, uh, and there was a lot of discussion as to whether he was a demon or a god, uh, um, you know, before people understood that he was, he was just a man. Nobunaga was reportedly uh, an eccentric. He wore Western dress on occasion. Um, he, you know, he had so many kind of varying interests um, that were outward looking and he, just seemed to instinctively understand uh, what a gifted uh, man Yasuke was beyond his physicality. And he, he basically um, determined that Yasuke could train to be a samurai, um, which the samurai were, you know, this was kind of like the upper echelons of, of Japanese society. Um, and so Yasuke was granted uh, his own living quarters. Uh, he was also given a servant, which I imagined would have felt strange to him. Uh, and, and then he began his ascent. Nobunaga and Yasuke fought in many battles together uh, for a period of um, about three and a half or four years, three to four years. And I guess this culminated in a final battle uh, in which um, they were defeated and Nobunaga was, you know, was, you know, he, he had to surrender. And in surrendering, uh, he had to commit like a ritual um, disemboweling. Yasuke was spared death uh, in that battle um, because um, purportedly uh, his enemies or their enemies kind of didn't see him as being kind of fully a man. Um, and, and so he was spared. Uh, but after, after that time, we have no sense of where he went. Um, that seems to be absent from the historical record. We just have these three or four years where we see him so clearly uh, and can only make assumptions about what happened after. And that was so interesting uh, to me to just have this snapshot. 
I think the story of Yusuke is something that forces us to acknowledge the ways in which we've sometimes had a limited view of the role of um, Black people in the history of, I, I guess, of anywhere, of, in this case, of, of the Far East. Um, it just really opens up our ideas of migration. It's such an exceptional story uh, that we have of Yusuke. Who would have, who would have thought that such a man could have existed um, and, and played that role?